Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to update your dock firmware for the several of the HP docks. Um, the one I'm demoing is the Thunderbolt dock. Now I've got a PowerShell script out on my GitHub to take care of this and uh, I've mapped it to a function so I can easily just pull these functions in through uh, DNS and then so it's get dash HP doc update details um, so by default it will also try to check HP CMSL so for the latest updates for that doc um, now I am I have this doc hooked up to a fairly old device it's the platform A3B2 which is a 840 G5 uh, so that's probably what like six seven years old already um, as you can see here, it ran the script or the function. It found that there is a newer firmware for this dock, the HP Thunderbolt Dock G2. Uh, the latest version is 71.1, and I have 65.1 installed. So I'm going to go ahead and update that with the same function, calling uh, the experience non interactive. So you will see something, and then I'm going to tell it to actually run the update. Uh, now, a stage option is there for docs that support the stage. The G2 does not support the staging feature. Um, and then I'm going to bypass it having check HPCMSL. Uh, so in the script, I also hard code all of the, <coughs> the software. And I try to keep that updated as much as possible. Um, so we're just going to bypass having it reach out to HP and check for newer ones um, because it doesn't work on this old of a platform. Uh, so you can see here, um, I did tell it to do transcript, so it's going to actually create a log at the same time, and there's a little extra um, console information as well. So it downloaded the soft pack it needed, um, and then it triggered the firmware updater. Um, so it's got four different things that it, it detected that it needs to update and it will go through that. Now I found that this process takes 10 to 15 minutes on the dock and during that time there is a lot of disruption as the dock disconnects and reconnects. Uh, I have opened up the device manager so you can start to see when things go a little wonky. Uh, you'll see that generic monitor, my external monitor, uh, disconnect and reconnect uh, many times throughout this as well as my Realtek USB uh, adapter which is the one that's in the dock. So this process works very well. I've had it, uh, I've never had it not work. Um, but just let it be known that if the end users are running this and you force it to start while they're using it, they probably won't be happy. So during your deployments on these docks, I would suggest that for at least for these where you cannot stage it, like the G2 and some of the older docks, um, have it run at night um, or have it so that the users can trigger it when they want to. Um, you can have it in the software center and with like notifications to go ahead and trigger it at their convenience. Uh, lots of ways to control the end user experience. You can also have it set so that this window pops up but doesn't do anything until they hit next. That's a pretty good option as well. And then you can preempt that with uh, notifications, emails, however you want to communicate to the end users. Um, so what is the point of updating the firmware? Their dock is working. Well, it might not be working as well as it can. They might not letting you know that they have screen flickers or other things um, so it's always a in general it's a great idea to keep your firmware up to date um, and it, it through the automation and these functions it's not overly hard to do so um, I would highly recommend using this function uh, as I've described on my website, so you could at least inventory all your docs and find out what firmware they're at currently. That way you can find if if you need it or not. You could even probably send out, oh, uh, 
screen flickered there. Uh, you can see now the device manager is uh, updating. A couple of the components are missing. Um, but you could, uh, based upon running this script on all the and pulling back inventory, you could do reports. You could reach out to end users, do a survey. Are you having issues? Um, and then just make it available in their software center so that if they are, they can go ahead and run it. Uh, lots of ways you can uh, leverage this function to uh, help get your docs updated. All right, and then now uh, yet another screen flicker. So when I was on the laptop itself, it never flickered, but um, so this, yeah, so this was on my 840G5 and I was recording uh, the screen from uh, my external. So it's interesting uh, of all the different flickers that we're seeing there. Or two or four. So as you see that this does take quite a while. My network is disconnected at this point. You can see from the little globe icon with the I don't know, the do not enter logo. <laughs> that uh, my internet isn't. Oh, and now it's back again. Uh, but it will be going up and down a few times throughout this process. So like if they're in a meeting, like this would be a nightmare as their screen will be going in and out, as well as their audio, their video, their network. Um, so this could be uh, pretty bad depending on the timing. Right. So originally I wrote this function, um, there was a customer who had several docs and having a difficult time updating them so I uh, went on eBay picked up a few docs and I wrote this this process just so it's easier to inventory and uh, basically a, a function to rule all the docs that I could get my hands on um, uh, in the comments I will leave some URLs to the blog posts I have that talk about how to use this functions and different methods for updating the, the docs. Uh, I'm a huge fan of task sequences because you could um, make those available, lots of pop-ups, letting end users know that things are going to happen because um, you can put a different text and make it so that they have to like click continue so that they know uh, that what they're doing is being disruptive. Um, also it can reboot the system now no reboot is required after you do this because you're not actually updating anything on the device itself you're only updating the dock um, it doesn't hurt to reboot the system after but it's not required um, and you could also use the application model um, in my lab I was using baseline so it would first check to see if the dock was out of date if not it would go ahead and run the update. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a baseline unless you can ensure that it's only going to happen off hours. You could add in different logic like if the user's logged in don't run the remediation things like that. Um, so there's lots of ways to deploy this in a way that will keep your environment updated without impacting the user. So here we finally finished the update it is um, doing the last restart of the dock. It is going to come back here in a moment and we'll see uh, the end results for the function. So we have the docks restarting which means we're not seeing that extra monitor and we're not seeing the, the network connection. All right, should be getting close to having it back. There we go. And transcript stopped, so you can go ahead and look at that as well. I'm going to run the function here. I'll 
one more time just to have it uh, double check and you can see that this time it would be inventory at the current version. The function is doing quite a bit of work so it does take a few seconds and there we can see that the installed firmware is the latest and matching. Alright, thank you.